Ayo, Zempak here, another day, another day, not forking for the man. All right, today's question, very dear to my heart, in front of my ask me, when did you start taking finances seriously? Oh boy, I think the answer to that question is, I guess, always. Might be like, you know, who the hell cares about money so so much, uh, especially when you're young. Um, it's easy. I, I think the reason why I cared about it is because I was always, uh, you know, poor. <laughs> that's that's what makes me care about it. Um, I mean, having great parents as examples also helps, but the poorness I think is is most of it, really. Uh, I'll give you several several examples, okay? Uh, ever since I was a kid, through middle school and high school, never had an allowance. Yeah, I mean, I guess my parents occasionally would give me, give me like 20 bucks here and there to purchase one thing or another. But no regular allowance, right? And when I say 20 bucks, it's never more than once a month. So to me, that money better last $20. I'd hold it in my pocket, my wallet, if I even had a wallet, I can't remember. Uh, I think that's why I, I developed my love of uh, dollar slices of pizza that you could find in New York City. And when I went to get those dollar slices of pizza, it was just the dollar slices of pizza, okay? No drinks, okay? It'd be a dollar for a Coke. And that was a terrible deal. It's still a terrible deal now, okay? So dollar slice pizza only. A slice of pizza is never worth more than one dollar, okay? You go into a New York pizzeria right now, a slice is like four or five dollars. That's absolutely ridiculous. I would never, ever pay that. One dollar a slice, at most. One dollar a slice, at most. Yeah. Moving on. First time I had a job, I think I worked at a, at a Wendy's or a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, yeah, didn't waste that money either because every cent that I made was oh, so, so precious to me. Do you know what it's like to make money through manual labor, like working at a Wendy's, sweeping the floors, taking out the trash, or uh, walking on like greasy floors? that's overspilled fries. I mean, for those of you who understand that, I hope you understand what that money was worth to you. Because for me, that was my sweat and tears, okay? Uh, when I made that, I think I made like three, four, five hundred dollars. I would hold on to that money. Like really, I didn't want to let it go because that was months of my, my personal work. It's incredible, like I never wanted to let that go, okay? So in college, uh, I had a little easier. Uh, despite, I took some work-study jobs, but I didn't really stay at those for very long. So how did, how did I have any money then? I'll tell you. Uh, it's because my parents really uh, wanted me to make sure uh, that I was feeding myself correctly. So they wanted to buy me the meal plan and I was just ask them to give me the money for the meal plan and I said I would go purchase the meal plan from the school myself. Uh, of course, I didn't actually do that, okay? I just said that, so they would give me, what is it, like $2,500 or something like that. And then I would use that money to buy my own groceries because I lived with my college friends. And this is how overpriced college meal plans are, okay? Sure, you know, you'd have a great time uh, eating at the college cafeteria. Uh, but I didn't do that, I took that money brought my own groceries, probably saved half. 50% at least, at least. So before I even had a job, I was saving 50%. Now, this is a little iffy because I was saving 50% of the money my, my parents gave me for food. I mean, obviously I survived college, right? Yeah, survived, still had half the money left over, right? And finally, what was my first post-college jobs? They were nothing special, nothing that I would even tell my friends about. That's how not great uh, they were, to be honest, okay? 
The difference is if I didn't have a good job, I just kept my expenses low, okay? My first, very first apartment, I think I paid like $400 a month in New York City, okay? So when people talk about how much New York City costs, I'm like, you, you, apparently you don't know what, they, what you're talking about, right? Like if you think you're going to live in a like suburban household, square footage, um, you should go back to the suburbs, okay? You don't deserve to live in New York City. I paid $400 a month. Yeah, sure, it was 15 years ago, so now it's probably worth $600 a month. $600 a month living with a friend in a basement far away from anything, but still in New York City. Very cheap, right? My grocery bill was $20 a month. Oh, did I say that? Sorry, not a month. $20 a week. Right? Can't be done, though. You might be like, what are you eating on $20 a week? Uh, a lot of bologna sandwiches with American craft cheese slices on white bread. Just saying can be done okay I, I just want to mention with these experiences uh the difference is i've always kept my habit rather spartan right like not luxurious not at all it didn't mean that i didn't want nice stuff right like everybody wanted nice stuff i also wanted nice stuff right but the thing is i really had to make sure that my fun money had to be uh, really used on something that's special that would give me joy month after month and year after year it's a lot harder to come by early on in my career right like i would have to save many months to buy one fun thing right yet you know the question was about when did i get serious about my finances and that's why i said you know always but also never right until i was 35 like until i re uh, read about financial independence as a movement I mean from my early 20s to my to 35 never I never did I even have a budget okay differences because of my like really good examples from my parents I was already saving like about half every year okay no one needed to tell me that I didn't read American personal finance advice but just terrible misleading and terrible when they're like oh you should save at least 10 percent or 15 percent no 50 50 five zero 15 so it's not enough i was always doing 50 percent when i made no money okay i just made sure my expenses were lower right live with a roommate in a basement far away from city center but still new york city okay? all these things are possible so whenever I read people say, like, oh, I make a six-figure salary, I can't live in New York City, I'm like, I, I, you can. You definitely can live in New York City or any other city in the United States on a six-figure salary. And the only question is whether you'll be comfortable, right? That's all. Now, the difference also is, like, what was the point of me saving 50% of my salary, right? Like... Once I saved that money, I did invest it. Because there's nothing else to do. It's just saving it doesn't mean anything by itself, right? And I don't know who taught me this, to be honest. I didn't take that to mean like I was taking my finances seriously. It just meant that I didn't want, you know, the tools or resources that I had to go to waste. Like think about that when you were a kid. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, I loved Legos when I was a kid, right? Those were resources, right? If you get one pack of Legos, two pack of Legos, they may not be the same set, right? Like one was a construction set, another might be like a sci-fi set. But once you had multiple pieces together, you can make them, combine them, make them something better. That's what I wanted out of the resources that I gather, which is just money, right? Like sitting in a savings account it wasn't doing anything so intuitively i was just like i gotta i gotta i gotta just invest it right like seems like a reasonable thing to do no one taught me that right uh, or uh, you know sometimes i think maybe what it is is that i'm just a contrarian right like i give you an example the things that i buy that are worth it to me in terms of luxury goods uh, maybe you guys have noticed in one of my other videos, I had the puppy jacket, right? I think retails for like five G's, okay? 
I remember I wore that to the office, and one of my coworkers uh, asked to borrow it. So we took a picture of this uh, ginger wearing it. And then a month later, I saw that he had a picture of him with the puppy jacket on as his Facebook profile picture. Wow, I uh, remember thinking this is some ridiculous. Uh, uh, this is some rig- ridiculous pretender shiznit, okay? Because that guy can't afford that jacket, and yet he still insisted on saying, "Oh, look, it's on social media, therefore it must be mine." Once I saw that, I realized, you know, and my initial th- thought was like, oh my god, that guy's such a loser. Okay, I mean, I still think that now. But the reality is that what I, the, the long term implication of that image is that everything that people show you can and probably is a lie on social media. Okay? It's total fake. If that's the case. Why would you care? Okay, Stick to your own truth. That's the only reality that you need to be concerned about, right? That's what finance is really, when it boils down to it, that's what it's all about, okay? How are you doing? Because you know how you're doing. Forget about the rest of the world. Just think about how you're doing. That's all. Have a good evening.